Um, this presentation is about uh, vascular permeability imaging uh, based on quantitative ASL. Uh, just give a short outline. Uh, we'll start with the traditional uh, gold standard of uh, Kitty Schmidt model going into the uh, one and the two compartment ASL provision model and the utilizing uh, the diffusion and the T2 difference uh, to estimate the water exchange rate across the Brabant barrier. And uh, uh, we summarize some pilot study in animal models and the clinical populations. Then we will discuss some future development. Um, you know, uh, all the traced kinetic model can be uh, traced back to this uh, gold standard of uh, Kitty Smith model. Uh, developed by two pharmacists uh, from University of Pennsylvania in the, uh, after World War II. So in their experiment, uh, they asked the subject to brace uh, a tracer, which is nitrous oxide, while uh, collecting blood from both uh, the radial artery and the jugular vein. And they plot uh, the time-dependent uh, tracer curve uh, in the venous and the, uh, arterial measurement. And the difference between the area under the curve of the arterial and the venous measurement indicates uh, the total tracer uh, deposited into the brain, uh, which can be described by these two equations. Uh, at the end of the experiment, you know, assuming uh, the, uh, the tracer reaches equilibrium between the blood and the brain, uh, you can derive the tracer concentration in the brain uh, using this equation where the S is the uh, blood uh, and the brain uh, partition coefficient, uh, you will see this a lot in the fat literature. And CBF can be simply derived by this uh, equation. So this model uh, is still widely used, I think, as a gold standard for validation of various partition measurements, mostly in animal models. So today, uh, we, of course, we talk about ASL. Uh, everybody knows how ASL works. Uh, ASL using uh, radio frequency pulse uh, to generate this uh, labeled bolus uh, using endogenous tracer. And uh, we can get a uh, perfusion weighted image like uh, uh, by subtraction of these control and the label images, which will be converted into absolute unit of milliliter per 100 gram per minute. Um, so how do we quantify it? I think, you know, uh, during the early days, uh, usually uh, it's uh, in the 1990s, uh, the, we generally, uh, people have been using this single compartment, uh, which was instant exchange of the water. So you can simply summarize, uh, this is a very, very nice plot from uh, a book chapter by Dutch and also shows, you know, uh, the labeled blood goes in. Uh, it can be called as a sink model, you know. Uh, when the labeled blood goes in the artery into the tissue and it instantaneously, magically exchanges with tissue, uh, the majority of the effect will relax with T1. It's like a draining, but there is a small proportion will go in out of the veins. So this will be nicely described by this modified Brock equation uh, with, a, uh, with a term for arterial inflow minus a term for venous outflow. And this lambda here uh, described the blood uh, brain partition coefficient, as we talk about as S in the Kitty Smith model. Um, so, in the, uh, since 2000, there's many groups, uh, including us, uh, Park St. and uh, Jin Yanzhou at John Hopkins University have been uh, investigating a uh, two compartment exchange model. So in this model, you have a capillary compartment and the brain tissue compartment. And when the uh, arterial blood uh, flows into the capillary component, uh, it exchanges through uh, the BBB into the interstitial space around its passage from the arterial to the venous end. So it's not instantaneous, and uh, it's around the way, so you have a gradual exchange uh, around your passage. So these, uh, it's, a uh, it's a complicated process, but fortunately, uh, there's actually this um, model called the indicator dilution model uh, developed in the 1960s to describe this exchange process. 
And they can be uh, fortunately written more or less like a modified Brock equation. And here is the capillary space equation and the interstitial space equation with some uh, assumption, you know, uh, uh, by ignoring the, uh, the, uh, the outflow of the water back into the veins, eventually, you know, you basically just have a, a item of the tissue influx of the labeled blood in this uh, modified block equation. And this term, uh, permeability surface area product, uh, PS over VC, VC is the uh, capillary uh, volume, is actually what we call water exchange rate. It turns out you cannot really separate these two terms uh, <clears throat> in our model. And uh, so my colleague, uh, Keith St. Uh, Lawrence, is in Lawson uh, Healthcare in London, Canada. He uh, developed this single pass approximation model. It's basically an iterative step-by-step -step, uh, calculation of the labeled blood passing through the capillary bed. And uh, uh, he simulated uh, the, the various compartment, uh, the label signal. So the red one was, uh, uh, is the capillary, uh, the blue is the tissue, and the uh, green is the total, and the black is the single compartment kidney model. So this uh, uh, plotted at the T of zero. So as you can see, the arterial component gradually losing its uh, intensity because the exchange into the tissue compartment. And at the T of zero, you don't see much difference between the two compartment and one compartment model because you know there's not much difference between the T1 of the two compartment. However, uh, if you simulate at the longer T of 60 milliseconds, uh, especially at a high field strength of 40, you will see the uh, arterial compartment uh, losing the signal very quickly because you know the blood is just going into the veins, and the venous end of the T2 star is very short, as we heard from last talk. And uh, the tissue compartment actually is not affected because the tissue is has the uh, constant T2 star. And uh, if you add them up, uh, the, the total model is actually deviate from the single compartment model. So two compartment is deviate from the single compartment. Uh, so as an experimental validation, uh, we did a study at uh, uh, 40, uh, at uh, basically measured the TE of ASL signal. As you can see, uh, at 40, you know, you, you're losing the ASL signal very quickly with TE. 1.5 actually, uh, it's not. And if you calculate CVF, uh, you will see there's a, a large underestimate of CVF with long TE uh, at uh, the 4T compared to 1.5T. So um, <clears throat> this shows you the underestimation uh, with the TE of 60 can reach 25% at 4T if you're not considering the T2 star effect. Uh, so uh, the good news is actually um, with uh, with the large difference between the uh, the T two of the uh, T two star of the capillary and the tissue compartment, you have the opportunity to separate the uh, fraction of the two components and estimate the water exchange uh, between the blood-brain barrier. So this is uh, several groups uh, since 2010, uh, they reported this approach by uh, mapping the, uh, the T2, or T2 star of the ASL signal as a function of delay time, and this is TE. So this uh, was from uh, this Gregory paper in JMR 2013. They used uh, a 3D gray sequence mapping the T2 of the ASL signal at multiple uh, multiple delays, and uh, um, so you will be able to plot a contour plot of uh, the ASL signal um, as a function of delay and the TE, and uh, you know you can fit it uh, to estimate the relative contribution of this red is the capillary and the green is the uh, tissue. So uh, by estimating this uh, two com components compartment, you're able to estimate the water exchange. 
So what they estimate is the uh, water exchange time is on the order of 440 milliseconds. And uh, if you convert it into the uh, water uh, exchange rate, it's 136 uh, per minute. This is basically the inversion of the exchange time. Um, so um, besides these T2-based methods, uh, we have also been looking into another alternative method based on the uh, diffusion difference. Uh, as you know, the, uh, the capillary, because of the perfusion, you will have a high pseudo diffusion. Uh, in the interstitial space, uh, the water diffusion is really restricted, uh, resulting in lower a uh, ADC values. So this idea was really the extension of the uh, original IVIM kind of model proposed by Levihan almost 30 years ago. Uh, basically, uh, what he assumes is uh, with microvascular flow, because the, uh, the, the flow was uh, uh, almost isotropic, so you will be able to uh, approximate as a pseudo diffusion process. And as you can see, uh, if you plot uh, this signal curve as a function of B value, it's not uh, mono exponential, but it's actually bi exponential, especially at the lower B value. So uh, what we have been doing is really try to develop a technology uh, using uh, diffusion weighted ASL. Um, so because it's a tiny, uh, small signal, so we developed this relatively complicated technology by combining a pseudo-continuous ASL uh, by taking advantage of this high SNR. Uh, we use background suppression so to uh, improve the temporal stability, and then we use this uh, twice refocused spin echo diffusion reading uh, with EPI readout to read the signal. We we did experiment uh, with the uh, at a full post labeling delay from 0 0.9 to 1.8, and the B value from 0 to 200. So. Within this uh, technology, we'll be able to get a relatively very reliable uh, division weighted ASL signal across various experimental conditions. And uh, uh, if you plot the curve in the gray matter and the white matter, so the gray matter, uh, as you can see, you know, uh, and, uh, and at a multiple post labeling delay, you, you will clearly see there's uh, two compartments. One is fast and the one is slow, the keying compartment. And then the slow one, we think, is, of course, it's represented the tissue, and the fast one represented the uh, vascular and the capillary. So with, uh, with prolonged post-labeling delay, you will see the fast component actually decrease the fraction. So that's uh, our evidence. It shows the uh, water exchange process. And with this um, bi-exponential uh, fitting of this curve, we estimate that uh, the KW is 189 and 166 per minute in the gray matter and the white matter, respectively. Um, so one of the main confounding factor in the estimation of uh, water exchange is this um, arterial transit time. Because um, in a vascular component, uh, it's actually a non-exchanging component. So water exchange only occurs in the capillary. So it's very important to know where, uh, at when, at when uh, this exchange process starts. So we developed this technology called the uh, flow encoding arterial screen labeling. It's called FIST. Um, it's basically two measurements, one with flow uh, spoiling gradient, one without flow spoiling gradient. And uh, uh, the ratio of the two actually can tell you uh, how long it takes the blood to flow into the exchanging compartment. So by combining this FIS technique and the uh, division weighted ASL technique, so Case and I uh, come up with this two-step measurement. And the first is we do uh, a B0 and a B10 uh, measurement at a sh relatively short delay, for example, 800 milliseconds. We were able to map the arterial transit time, which is on the order of 1.5 seconds. And uh, uh, we also do uh, this uh, repeat experiment uh, with uh, uh, B0 and the B of 50 but at a longer post-labeling delay. Um, 
So this time, you know, by taking into account the transit time, we're able to estimate relatively accurately estimate the KW.